worst family channels in YouTube history, and coming in at number five is the Prince family, who would quite literally give up their own children for a couple extra views. The parents Bianca and Damien gained an audience by peddling the most atrocious clickbait you might ever witness. Take for example this video titled, Pray for the Prince family house firefighters pulled up with a thumb- Yeah, they be clickbaiting their titles. <laughs> with their thumbnails and all that, you know. I mean, it's, it gets views, you know. They, they, want, they want the money, which is nothing wrong with that. How implying that the house- over the age of 18 watch the Prince family or any of these family channel uh, matter of fact Fire. In all actuality, their house-related emergency was a leaking pipe in the backyard, which was fixed not with a firefighting crew, but rather by turning the tap off. In a different video, they'd clickbait, my car got repoed, we're going broke. Although after clicking on the video, you'll find that the car was simply being taken to a mechanic as a clickbait, 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 in the title result of a flat battery. On top of this, they've literally uploaded more than 10 extremely serious videos. They be doing the same type of videos almost every year, bro. Stating that they're breaking up without ever actually doing so, but even then this is nothing compared to how they use their children and pregnancies to get extra clicks. The scummiest example is this video titled No Heartbeat, with a thumbnail of a pregnant Bianca going into an ambulance, implying that perhaps their baby had died. When you watch the video, however, it's explained that Bianca simply had a bladder infection, which moved the position of the baby in her womb. They couldn't find a heartbeat at first because she moved so much. The baby keeps moving. Then in this video titled We got into a car accident at 32 weeks pregnant, she freaked out. The Prince family implied that they'd crashed the Lambo and put their unborn baby in danger. When in all reality, they'd simply gotten a couple. Got scratched their car. Got scratched their vehicle. The car got scratched. Scratches at the rear of the vehicle. Although it'd be when the baby was born that they'd become even scummier, beginning with Bianca implying that she wasn't happy with the baby's physical appearance just moments after giving birth. She's got brown eyes for sure. I thought she was gonna have pretty eyes. Bright blue eyes. She do have pretty eyes. She's gonna have brown eyes for sure. Her ears. Look at her. Imagine being one hour old and your parents are obsessing over your skin slash eye color. The nurse had to remind them that she's a beautiful baby. If you mix this in with more clickbait about Damien not being the father, it's no surprise that then state CPS almost took our kids from us. Although this video was also clickbait, as they'd spend the entire 36 minutes doing a mukbang without ever addressing the title. While it's hard to call their content noble, the Prince family haven't really hurt anyone with their untruthful videos, although the same can't be said for the royalty family. The household consisting of Mother Andrea, Father Ali, and their son Faran employ much of the same tactics as the Prince family, although with the added bonus of extremely fake videos, often made with the purpose of justifying poor choices. For example, in mid-2019, they'd upload a video titled, Why is this happening to our family, the truth, in which they'd fake a scenario where fans were showing up at their house. Hey, bro, why Taking pictures of my house. Hey, bro, why are you taking pictures of my house? I love the show, bro. That has to be a skit, bro. That that that. This clip has to be a skit. There's a grown man taking a taking a taking a flick of another grown man's house. So they could then announce in the very next video that they were buying a mansion. Once in their mansion, they'd stage another video where a homeless person had broken into their back house, leading Ali to become the hero by giving the homeless guy money. I don't want him to stay on the streets. Can't be selfish. Uh, I'm gonna give you some cash, but I'm gonna need you to leave, alright? Only four months later, their back house was actually broken into by a real intruder, leading them to show their true colors by giving a totally different response. Are you serious, bro? Going to people's homes and sleeping in the back? Hey, search color cops. With these videos also hinting at their next major problem, extreme materialism. Their channel achieved most of its growth through videos spoiling their son beyond belief. For example, eight-year-old takes parents' credit card no budget at mall, throwing a dart on a map and buying whatever it lands on, and if you guess the price, I'll buy it for you challenge, in which they spend up to a thousand dollars on brand name clothing for their child, just so they can make a viral video. Although their fake videos and materialism are pretty minor when compared to their sketchy family history. In March 2021, the royalty family uploaded a video titled, I'm not Faran's father, truth revealed, in which the dad Ali explained that he was actually Faran's stepdad. I'm not his biological dad, but I consider myself as his dad. I love him to death. He's like my son. I treat him like my son. And around the same point in time, Faran's biological father came forward to state that he'd been locked out of his son's life for over four years, which was followed by him appearing on the Dad Challenge podcast, where he'd completely exposed the family. It stated the mother, Andrea, was a former adult film star who fled to the USA after getting into trouble with a group of drug dealers in South America. After she and the biological dad moved to the USA, she cancelled the biological dad's visa, forcing him to return to South America, then began cheating on the biological dad with Ali after the two met in a gym. The son, Faran, has no idea that any of this even happened, as he's completely forbidden from going on the internet. Faran is completely and utterly never allowed on the internet. Ali blocks him from every incoming anything. He's not allowed to have a phone with the internet. Damn, they wild, bro. The guy can't even go to America, bro. He can't even come to North America. You feel me? He's trying to stay in South America. That's crazy. He's trying to visit, he's trying to visit his kid, but he can't do that because he, because he's blocked, bro. He can't, he can't do that, man.
And therefore, the parents simply tell Ferran that the biological dad is crazy. Although, if you take this, add some scams, poor financial decisions, and a severe case of bankruptcy, you'll likely end up with the Ace family. Similar to the royalty family, the Ace family gained close to 20 million subscribers by throwing money around in pursuit of the perfect family image. It began with the husband, Austin, purchasing a Jeep for his wife, Catherine's birthday. Although, within only 18 months of doing so, this had escalated into buying Lamborghinis and flexing their mansion. Throughout the process, they were exposed for renting despite having claimed they bought the property. Although, it'd be when they did actually buy their own mansion that their channel completely fell apart. The Ace family essentially found two separate houses, ripped out the insides and combined them together, creating a 12 bedroom, 13 bathroom mega mansion. It cost them over $10 million to buy the property in an area where very few sold for more than 2 million, made worse when it was shown that they'd financed the entire purchase. The McBrooms took out a hard money loan of $8.85 million from Five Arch Funding Corp and another $1 million loan from TMK Development LLC, who I'm assuming is also a hard money lender. Hard money loans are expensive loans used by house flippers that almost always have a one year payback term. They're considered expensive because the borrower typically pays multiple points at closing and an interest rate of 10 to 12 percent on an interest only loan to pay off their loans austin hosted a boxing event called social gloves which he estimated would make between 200 and 500 million dollars instead it sold only 136,000 pay-per-view subscriptions at between 50 and 90 dollars each meaning that at an absolute maximum the event made no more than 12 million dollars or 17 times less than the estimated figure for this reason austin was unable to pay any of the fighters made worse when he was sued by the events organizer for 100 million dollars this would then accompany 11 other lawsuits relating to previous rental properties and catherine's makeup line, doing so much damage to their finances, they could no longer afford their mortgage. In mid-2021, it was announced that their mega mansion was going into foreclosure, after which they'd upload a video titled Our House Story, in which they'd spend over an hour blaming the developer for building the house incorrectly, before stating this. And we're probably gonna get like five more houses in the next 10 years. Like, we'll, we'll, we're gonna invest, we're gonna get more homes and more homes. Damn, that's OD, bro. Y'all heavy on the houses, bro. Moving, moving like, moving every year, bro, to house to house to house. Don't you want to stay in one house? For the rest of your life? Hey, come on, bro. Y'all have, having to move every year, bro. However, the Ace family have made no such comeback, as things have only gotten worse. When we covered the Ace family back in November 2021, their channel was still doing 10 million views per month. However, this number has since dropped to less than 2 million as a result of an almost non-existent upload schedule. The Ace family tried to redeem themselves by hosting a festival called Ace Fest, which attendees called underwhelming, before they'd announce a car giveaway, which was then debunked as a scam by Atosi in this video. The current state of the Ace family is best summarized by the dislike ratio on their most recent- more dislikes than likes, bro. That's crazy. It's a video one. Although even then, they still look perfect in comparison to Daddy 5 The family began on YouTube by playing fairly innocent pranks on each other. However, as time progressed, the parents seemed to realize that the more extreme the prank, the more views they'd get. With this in mind, the parents began to fish for increasingly severe reactions. Get her as mad as she could possibly get her. I'll end it, but let's see how mad you can get. While realizing that not every kid in the family was worth pranking equally. Emma cannot be pranked when we do prank her. I don't watch Daddy 5 I heard of him. I heard, you know, of the channel, but I never watched the channel, never in my life. She has like no reaction to it. While they couldn't get a reaction out of Emma, Cody was the exact opposite and would always give a highly emotional response in every single video. For this reason, he was heavily picked on by the parents, which would peak with a now infamous video titled The Invisible Ink Prank, where the parents basically accuse Cody of something he didn't do, then yell at him until he's crying in the corner. With comments such as, These people are just sick and evil. Nothing but a bunch of sadists. They severely traumatize the children. I'm so scared for all those kids. It's no surprise that the parents then try to convince the audience that the prank had been set up. I don't care. Videos are fake. They're fake. They're over exact. Exaggerated. Some videos are scripted. Some videos, I mean, they're just played out. However, just a few days prior, the parents had said something different to Kim. Damn, they took it. Damn. Daddy Ofa might be, might be arrested. They must have took it very serious. People must have took it very, very serious. People must have, like, cared about that kid, bro. Uh, are these videos 100% real? Right. The, the videos were not fake, but some things are a little exaggerated. After which the family removed every single video from their channel, excluding a formal apology in a desperate bid to win back their audience. This has been the absolute worst week of our life, and we realize that we have made some terrible parenting decisions. But with comment after comment along the lines of, worst week of our life? Yeah, you gave them damage for their whole lives. You're disgusting. It seemed their viewers were done watching, and the audience wasn't the only thing that the family... They lost custody. They lost custody over their kids, bro. Over YouTube shit, bro. Damn, bro. 
is set to lose. Cody and his 11-year-old sister, Emma, were both removed from the home and at least temporarily placed with their biological mother, Rose Hall. Emma and Cody are with me. I have emergency custody. As mentioned, Cody and Emma were both taken and returned to their biological mother, after which an article was posted reading, controversial daddy 5 YouTubers sentenced to probation for prank videos with their kids. It explained that each of the parents had been charged with two counts of neglecting a minor, after which YouTube made the choice to permanently delete daddy 5s channel. With nowhere else to go, the family began posting videos to their own website behind a $5 paywall, although they'd soon discontinue the practice with the message, in order to move on with the healing process from the 2017 events, we have agreed willingly to remove our videos from even this site. For the sake and well-being of our family, Mike and I feel it is best that we take a long break from the public spotlight. They returned to YouTube in 2019 with a new channel called The Martin Family, although with an average dislike ratio of around 75%, it seems their social media future is as dead as fried chicken. Even then, Daddy05 is lucky to have a life outside of prison, as the 8 Passengers Family channel recently landed its founder behind bars. 8 Passengers was created by Ruby and Kevin Frankie back in early 2015, where they began to share videos of their unique life as a Mormon family of eight. They post videos doing everything from sports to parties, however the audience quickly noticed that whenever the kids did anything wrong, the parents always gave an unreasonable level of punishment. For example, when a six-year-old daughter failed to make her own lunch before school, the mother punished the daughter by refusing to bring her food, despite being asked by the teacher. I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning, so the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Later stating in a different video, Damn, bro, she got to eat, bro. What if she gets hungry? What if she starving, bro? She was starving and you... And she she can't get no food like come on now that's mad unfair bro that's so that's wild you're wilding for that you bugging that's wild corny my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because this is going to sound like I'm a mean barbarian, but I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. When these punishments failed to achieve the parents' desired outcome, they up the ante by refusing presents. Well, doing chores is important, bro. You got you to gotta do your chores, you know? You, you, you want to understand, like, the chores part, you know? You know, you want them to learn, like, you know, clean the dishes and shit. Their two youngest kids on Christmas. This year, they are not going to be visited by Santa. Christmas morning, their four older siblings will be getting Christmas presents to open and that they will have the gift of love from their dad and I because we want them to really have a visceral experience that hits them. Which was in addition to their oldest son sleeping on a beanbag for seven months as punishment for playing one single prank. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. Noticing a pattern of overly strict parents. Over one prank that they did, over one prank that he did. You have to see on a beanbag for mad long. That's crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. A change on board petition was launched reading Get 8 Passengers Ruby Frankie under investigation for child abuse after which multiple videos were published documenting the family's controversial history. As a result, their viewership evaporated by over 90% and by 2023, the channel was struggling to gain a million views per month. Ruby had also grown tired of being criticized by the public making the choice to permanently delete the channel on the 2nd of August, 2023. Damn, this year, bro, she deleted her channel. She just deleted the channel this year. However, this would have been the end of the Eight Passengers saga. The oldest daughter, Sheree, had always been outspoken about her family's parenting style and would post this image to her Instagram story, showing police and the caption, finally, only four weeks after the channel was deleted. It was then revealed that the mother had been arrested for aggravated child abuse after the 12-year-old son had been found emaciated and malnourished with open wounds and duct tape around the extremities. The condition of the juvenile was so severe that they were seen by Santa Clara Ivan's EMS and transported to a local area hospital. Ruby Frankie is currently being held in jail awaiting... So yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, y'all know the vibe. Baby, just checking out you are.